Welcome to Joey's Tech, my friends. In this video, you will learn the insertion sort algorithm. If you have played cards in your life, then you must have sorted them as well while holding them in your hands. The insertion sort algorithm works in a similar fashion. Like the selection sort algorithm, the insertion sort algorithm also virtually splits the array into sorted and unsorted subarrays. It works by picking an element from the unsorted part and placing it in the correct position in the sorted part. Let me also tell you that the insertion sort algorithm is efficient for smaller arrays. All right, we have seen enough theory about the insertion sort algorithm. Let's now start understanding the algorithm practically. This is the array that we'll sort using the insertion sort algorithm. The insertion sort algorithm also works in the form of passes, similar to bubble sort and selection sort algorithms. By the way, if you want to learn bubble sort and selection sort algorithms, then you can find the link to the videos in the I button or you can find the link in the description box of this video. Let's start with pass one. Pass one will start from the second cell of the array, which is the cell at index one. We are going to declare a variable known as key and initialize it to 12, which is the value at index one from which pass one is starting. Now we'll compare the value of the key with the element on the immediate left of it, which is 13 at index zero. Since 12 is less than 13, since 12 is less than 13, hence what we'll do, we'll shift 13 to the next cell like this. And since we have reached the start of the array and there are no more values on the left hand side to compare, Hence, we'll place the value of the variable key in this cell at index zero. Okay. So in simple terms, what we did, we compared 12 with 13. And since 12 is smaller than 13, hence we swapped their positions. This was pass one. Let's now see pass two. Now pass two will begin from the third element of the array that is from index two. Okay, if you remember, pass one began from the second element of the array. So with every pass, we are shifting one place to the right. So the value of the key will now become 15. We'll compare the value of the key variable with 30 because it is to the immediate left of the cell from where pass two began. Since 15 is greater than 13, hence no swapping will happen. And that's the end of pass two. If you stand at 15, then check on the left hand side. It's the sorted part of the array 12, 13, 15. Okay. We do pass three. Now it will begin from the fourth element of the array, which is the element at index three. So the key variable will now be initialized to four. Now we compare four with the element that is present on the immediate left of the cell from which pass three began that is 15 at index two. So four gets compared to 15 and four is a smaller. So time for an exchange. We can do something like shifting 15 to the right and putting four over here in this cell. This is the correct procedure too. But now four needs to be further compared with the items on the left. So just from the optimization point of view, we keep the value of four in this variable key only and just shift 15 to the right. So let it be 15 over here. And this is the reason why we declared a variable key. You will get what I'm saying completely once we complete this pass. So we already compared four with 15. Now four gets compared with 13. Since four is smaller than 13. So we shift 13 one cell to the right. And finally, four gets compared with 12. Since four is smaller than 12, hence 12 shifts one cell to the right. And we have no more cells on the left to compare four with. Hence, four gets placed in this cell where 12 was earlier. And that's the end of pass three. Check now that from the element of the array from which pass four started, the array on the left hand side is completely sorted. So 
I explained the pass three to you in a very technical manner, but let me explain it to you in very simple terms. We kept comparing four with these elements on its left and all the elements we found greater than four. We kept shifting them to the right and in the process four got to its correct position. That is the first cell of the array. We do pass four now and the element that we are going to pick in pass four is the final element of the array, which is the element at index four. So we initialize the key variable to five. Now five gets compared with 15, which is the element on its immediate left. Since five is smaller than 15, hence we shift to 15 one cell to the right. All right. Now five gets compared with 13 since five is also smaller than 13. Hence we shift to 13 one cell to the right. Now five gets compared with 12 since five is smaller than 12. Hence we shift 12 one cell to the right. And now we compare five with four since five is greater than four. Hence we are not going to shift to four one cell to the right. So we are now going to place five in this cell because this is its correct position. We had 12 over here, but since it was greater than five, hence we shifted it one cell to the right, making this cell kind of empty for five. So let's place five over here. And that's it. This completes pass four. And you can see that after pass four, we have the array sorted. So let me sum up the algorithm for you in the simplest terms. Element in every pass gets compared with the elements on the left. And with every element it finds greater than itself, it exchanges the positions. And the process in the pass stops either when the picked element finds a smaller element on its left or if it has reached the start of the array. That's it. This is the insertion sort algorithm. Now let's write it programmatically. It will be two for loops for sure. Let's write the outer for loop. So it will be for within brackets. It will be int i equals to one semicolon i less than n semicolon i plus plus. Okay. This is pretty much self-explanatory. When we have five elements in the array, we saw that the number of passes is four and the pass one started from the second element of the array, which is the element at index one. Hence the starting condition is i is equals to one. And since we have four passes, when the number of elements is five, hence the end condition is i is less than n. The first thing that we did in every pass was to initialize the key variable to the element of the index from which that particular pass is starting. Hence, we are going to write key equals to ARR within square brackets i. Okay. Now we will work on writing the inner loop. I would prefer it to be a while loop and it has to go left. The starting position should be one cell left of the starting cell of every pass. So before we start with the while loop, we'll have to write J equals to I minus one. Now let's write the while loop. So it will be while and within brackets, we are going to write the condition. So it is obvious that the loop cannot go beyond the first cell of the array. So the first condition of the while loop will be j has to be greater than or equals to zero for this loop to run. And as we saw in pass four, the loop stops when there is a smaller element than the value of the key variable on its left. So we will write and operator key less than ARR j. Okay. Like we have been shifting the elements to the right when the value of the key variable happens to be smaller than the elements on its left. So we write the code for that within the body of the while loop. So it will be ARR within square brackets. It will be J plus one equals to ARR J. Okay. 
and since it's a while loop hence we will have to reduce the value of j as well so it will be j equals to j minus 1 and once this while loop is over it means that we have got our index represented by j in which we can place the key the value of the key variable so we will write arr j plus 1 equals to key okay you may ask why the index is j plus 1 over here it's because this line of code before the loop terminates will have reduced the value of j by 1 that is why and this algorithm that you see is the insertion sort algorithm my friend which you can implement in any programming language of your choice the time complexity of the insertion sort algorithm is big o squared since we have two loops with this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed learning the insertion sort algorithm from Joey's Tech. Do share this video with your friends and colleagues. I look forward to helping you with programming and algorithms. And only for this video, goodbye and take very good care of yourself.